Welcome to the final part in this series of STM32 based hardware design using Altum Designer. In the previous video we looked at the aspects of PCB routing and then also did some final checks on the board. In this video we're now finally ready to produce our output files, that means Gerber files, pick and place, bit of materials and I'll also show you the really cool draftsman feature in Altium Designer to make some documentation for your board which will help the manufacturer also in the assembly process. Make sure to follow along and to help you do that make sure to check out the link in the description below which gives you a free trial for Altium Designer. Let's get started. With our PCB pretty much done, it's time to produce our output files. This includes, for example, Gerber files, so the actual manufacturing files to get this PCB manufactured, containing all the lay information of copper, silk screens, solder mask openings, and so on. As well as if we want this board assembled, we'll have to provide a pick and place file and a bill of materials as an absolute minimum. I'll also show you Altium Designer's Draftsman feature, which is a great way of documenting your designs and very helpful assembly information and general information about your design. So let's go through that. With your PCB document open, let's produce some Gerber files. Go to the top left, File, Fabrication Outputs, and Gerber X2 files. Depending on the country in and your manufacturer's preferences, you will choose your units in either inches or millimeters. I typically go with millimeters. Then format four to five we can keep. You can keep pretty much all of these settings as they are. However, we need to choose which layers to plot and then also which drills to plot. We of course want the profile, so we can click on the right side in this checkbox, which is essentially the outline of the board. Legend top is the top overlay or top silk screen. And because we have components on the top side, we also want solder paste applied to the top to the pads, and we need that then to explore the paste top layer. Again, this is for automated assembly, or if you want to make a stencil, for example. Solder mask top, copper top and bottom, solder mask bottom, and we don't really need the paste at the bottom because we don't have any bottom components, so we can leave that unchecked, but we can check the legend bottom, which is the bottom silk screen. Let's also export the top pad master. Then on the drills tab, we also want to export the non-plated through-hole drills, and we want to export the plated through-hole drills. Then simply click OK. And this will open the Camtastic viewer. If it hasn't, click on the bottom left on the Camtastic tab, and we can see all of the exported Gerber files or Gerber file layers over here. What I'll typically like to do is then go through each one and check, okay, do all the connections seem to be there? Has the silk screen exported properly and so on? So we can do that by right clicking and all off, then selecting a single layer, for example, the top copper. We can navigate around, again, using our usual Altium Designer commands, checking out the top copper, checking out the bottom copper, we can check out the top pads, for example, silk screen, paste, and so on. So it really pays off to go through the Gerber files, check your output files for consistency, make sure you haven't spotted any mistakes. So these are our first output files. To find where Altium Design has put these, we can go back to the Projects tab, right-click on your project, and click Explore. This will then open the relevant Altium Designer project, and we simply need to navigate to Project Outputs, and we have all of our output files here. I've deleted some of the other files which also get exported, but essentially we only need the ones we selected. So the drill files and the Gerber layer files we selected. Typically manufacturers will want these either zipped or RAD, so I can just right click and then create an archive, for example. So here now I have my zip file, which is just my project name, dash Gerber. This I can then send straight away pretty much to a manufacturer for production. But of course we also want assembly files as well, so let's get those made. For assembly, we as a minimum need the pick and place files, which is for computer placement, X and Y coordinates of where all of these components are on the board. And we need a bill of materials, which tell manufacturer, manufacturer part number, maybe a dis distributor link, some more information, maybe a footprint name and so on. Let's generate the pick and place file first. Again, top left file, assembly outputs, and generate pick and place files. We can select which columns we want. Typically, the default is fine. However, I would like to set my output settings to metric because I'm also using millimeters for my Gerber files. You see the columns as default are designator. We have some sort of comment, which layer, the footprint name, center X in millimeters, center Y in millimeters, and what orientation we have in terms of rotation. We are using this TagConnect Serowire debug header, J200, which actually isn't on the bill of materials. Those are just pads. That's why I want to deselect include standard or no bill of material items, and that gets rid of that. You can also choose your format to be CSV or text, then click OK. Then again, navigating to the project output folder, we can see this new text file has appeared, which is the pick and place file. So I double click on that. We can see we have various information provided by Altium Designer, but our main pick and place information, which are the columns that we exported earlier, are shown here. And this is again something you'd send to the manufacturer. 
I typically get rid of the information at the top here. So it's simply a tab separated file like so. And that's what I then send to manufacturer. Again, I'll rename this just for clarity. And I typically call it a CPL file or component placement file. Depending on your manufacturer's preferences, again, it's always important to speak to your manufacturer. They might prefer CSV as opposed to text. Lastly, let's export the bill of materials and you can either do this from the PCB layout editor or from the schematic. In either case, you go to the top menu bar, go to reports, bill of materials. This is the simplest way of exporting bill of materials. Out of Designer has some really cool features on managing bill of materials with active bomb, distributor part links, availabilities, and so on. This is the most basic way of doing so. As with the component placement file or the pick and place file, we have various columns for some comment, which might be the component value. We have descriptions, designators, footprints, and so on, as well as quantities. If you'd like to add any other information, you have to go to the columns tab on the right side. You can select columns. You can then click on this hidden or eye symbol on the right side to select whatever columns you want to show or hide and then also be exported. The way I've maintained my libraries is that I have a manufacturer and a manufacturer part number column as well, which I'll then add into the bill of materials. However you've maintained your libraries, you would then select certain columns to show and then also export. Once you select those extra columns, you can choose your file format in the general tab, typically CSV or Microsoft Excel. Let's go with CSV for simplicity, then click export and give it a, de a decent name. For example, project name dash bill of materials, then click OK. Again, in the project outputs folder, you can then inspect the bill of materials, just a comma separated values, the comments Then we have for the manufacturer and manufacturer part number, again, depending on how you set up your libraries for all of these various components. That in combination with the component placement file or the pick and place file and the Gerber files is pretty much the bare minimum you need to get your boards manufactured and assembled. However, we're going to go a slight step further and I'd like to show you how to use the draftsman capabilities in Altium Designer to create some pretty cool documentation for your product. In Altium Designer, right click on your project and click add new to project, then draftsman document. We're just going to go with the default and click OK. Now we're in this default draftsman document and this is behaves very similar to a schematic in terms of navigation. If you want to create multiple pages, you simply right click and click add new sheet. I'm just going to show you what kind of things we could create on in a draftsman document. So right click, click place, and we can have all of these various views created. So we can create a board assembly view, fabrication view, for example, of the various layers, additional views of certain sections, isometric views, and so on. So let's have a look through some of these. If we look at the board realistic view, first of all, under additional views, we can place it down somewhere just as a visual visualization on the first page, create the top and bottom views. So I could control C, control V, click on the second one on the right side, I can change my view, for example, to bottom, like so. And the cool thing is, for example, these views or anything on this draftsman document, once we change something on our main PCB, we can simply right click and import changes and it will update everything on this draftsman document. So this is a really powerful tool. We could create another sheet, and on that, we could create, for example, the layer views. So right click, place, board fabrication view. So I could maybe create views of the top of the copper layers. I can, of course, change the scale on the right side. I could change what layer it is, if it's the top layer, bottom layer, or maybe even a top overlay or top solder and so on. Let's check out some other views. For example, an isometric view of the top or the bottom. And this can be very helpful when it comes to assembling components with a certain orientation, maybe larger through hole ones which oftentimes require manual assembly for the person doing the assembly that they can check the correct orientation using your document. For assembly in particular, I always like to use, of course, the board assembly view, place it down somewhere, and then I increase the scale again by clicking and then changing the example to a larger scale, so a really blown up version. And we only have components on the top side, but you can see some of these component designators are a bit obtruded. On the right side, on this properties tab here, I can scroll down and I can change the component body to just bounding box, and that clears things up immensely already. Now you can see this is the top view. We have all of our component designators like so, and this is really, really helpful for creating assembly drawings, and you can see this took no time at all. In this document, I can add in text as well. I could do titles, I can do drill tables, I can add in my bill of materials, for example, like so, with various columns and so forth. And again, this is all updated with a click of a button using right-click, import changes, anytime you make changes to your PCB. And this is usually how I'd go about then making additional documentation for my designs. 
For example, this is an example of a project I have. I might give this a title, I put my logo in. First of all, top and bottom views to get an overall overview of this board, what dimensions I might have and so on. Then I might give a layer view. This might be a four layer board in this example, just for manufacturing. Then assembly views I can add in the silk screen so we have a good relation between the assembly drawing and the actual real life board. Again, I can zoom in for more detail and so on. This is a different project I made, which is an FPGA based hardware accelerator. I give a project name, I can import my logo. I give a brief overview of the board with some realistic views, top and bottom. Then I can present all the layers, isometric views. I can do my assembly views for top and bottom, including the silk screen, which provides a nice relation then to the actual manufactured board and so forth. The nice thing is I can then very easily export this as a PDF. So going back to our very rough, very example style draftsman document, all that I need to do to export this as, as a PDF is click on the top left file, export to PDF, give it a name, and we can just call this, for example, project name dash documentation. In our output directory, we can then double click on the PDF. And the nice thing is this scales very nicely, even at very zoomed in percentages. We can see all of the views here. We can zoom in nicely. And this is really helpful for your PCB manufacturer or the person and the people assembling your board with all of the extra documentation you're providing them. So this is something I strongly suggest you try out and try and create your own assembly documentation. Well done for making it through this series. I hope it was insightful to give you a basic overview of the whole PCB or hardware design process, all the way from part selection, schematic design, and then producing the necessary output files to get your board manufactured and assembled. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video on Altium Academy. Bye-bye.